Dean Heyman, Jonathan Fielding, Vice Provost Tim Brewer, members of the faculty of the UCLA School of Public Health, parents, and smiling, proud, accomplished, idealistic members of the graduating class of 2013, welcome. It is, we should play. It is such an honor for me to speak to you today as you graduates embark on a career that will improve the health of people at home and abroad in a caring, bold, if not audacious profession. This school, now more than 50 years old, has made a huge contribution to training and research in, in public health. And I'm a bit humbled, perhaps intimidated, to be the first commencement speaker before your new dean. I hope I do okay, dean. She is a real visionary for global health, whose research has demonstrated that good public health policies and practices can defeat child poverty and improve children's chances for a healthy and long life. Jonathan Fielding, my classmate in the School of Public Health a few years ago, <clears throat> uh, you and Karen must be incredibly proud of these students before you who sit with their degrees and you, uh, beneficiaries of your philanthropy and your vision who will represent the public health practitioners and leaders of tomorrow. We all celebrate this wonderful, enduring contribution that you and Karen have made. This is now, parents, parents, you are rightly proud to see your sons and daughters completing their studies, receiving their diplomas. What a day of joy. My son just graduated from college this year, and besides my pride and great expectations, I too am a bit relieved that my wallet will be a little bit fatter next year. <laughs> And like you, I wonder, and I'm concerned, what will my child do next? Will he find a job? Will he be able to support himself? Rest assured, my own mother had the same concern when I graduated. And at the ripe old age of 97, she still does. <laughs> she wanted me to come home to, to our small town in New Jersey to practice medicine, following in my father's footsteps. And she's come to terms with my career in public health and I will tell you why. Parents, by choosing public health, your children have defined themselves with good values and ideals. These graduates have demonstrated their concerns for people's health, for social justice, and for their desire to contribute to the future well-being of the population. They are empowered with science and with evidence. They are excited, committed, you can hear them, and educated to improve the health of people at home and abroad. And they will go out well prepared to address some of the most compelling health struggles of our time. Child survival, health equity, gun control, the obesity epidemic, health effects of climate change, smoking, addictive disorders, health systems coverage, physical and activity, and more. Now, yeah, 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 you must be thinking, how will they ever do this? My kid, you guys there. Well, when I graduated from the School of Public Health with Dr. Feeling, I asked the classmate sitting next to me, so what are we going to do now? He chuckled. He responded with great self-importance. I'm going to improve the lives of people millions at a time. Wow. I said, I cringed. My eyes rolled. Is this guy for real? Is he drunk? What is he smoking? <laughs> yet, yet in public health, one can do just this. Think about the eradication of smallpox, perhaps the greatest public health achievement of the last century, eliminating disease that for millennium had killed millions of people around the world. And think about childhood immunizations that now protect 80% of the world's children against tetanus, whooping cough, diphtheria, measles, meningitis, hepatitis, pneumonia, polio, that also once had affected millions. And the fortification of foods with folate to prevent birth defects and the fluoridation of water to prevent dental cavities, and the iodination of salt to prevent thyroid problems and mental retardation, and the removal of lead from gasoline to prevent lead poisoning in children, and placing restrictions on smoking to prevent heart disease and cancer, to name a few. 
Jonathan Fielding, as health commissioner here in Los Angeles, is doing just this, improving the lives of the millions of people in Los Angeles every day. Think of it. So work in public health is not merely a job, it's a mission to be approached with passion, with competence, with commitment that is shared by every member of your class. This aspiration defines who we are working in public health. So clearly, the vision of doing good by the millions, helping entire populations, remains a central tenet of public health. What other profession can claim this as their true goal? So my first encouragement to you, graduates of the class of 2013, is to think big, to think by the millions, because public health is a career that's, uh, that does just that, where you can actually improve the lives of entire populations, millions at a time. But now you might ask, how do I become engaged? At the end of the day, I'm gonna be sitting here with this wonderful piece of paper in my hand, the diploma, and wondering, how do I become involved? What do I do next? Where do I start? I struggled with the same issues a few years back, I can, and I can tell you, the path looks much clearer looking backwards than it was when I was like you, trying to predict my future. You know, Yogi Berra once said, it's hard to predict things, especially when it's about the future. <laughs> so I confronted disaster early on, just out of medical school. As I was completing my internship, my chief of medicine came up to me and thought that I was really more interested in social issues and public health than in practicing medicine. So he asked me to leave the program. I was devastated. I had no job. I had a disappointed mother. I had two diplomas in public health and medicine, and I had no future. So after much soul searching, I realized another important lesson about setting out on your career path, that in every disaster, there is an unexpected opportunity, a silver lining. My chief was probably right, and this might have been the best disaster of my life. And then by serendipity, a friend noted an opening in epidemiology at Oxford. The professor, Sir Richard Dull, saved lives by the millions by establishing the link between smoking tobacco and death from heart disease and cancer. Back in the 1950s, he simply queried all physicians in England about their smoking habits, paid the Registrar General one pound each for any death certificate that had physician listed on the death certificate, and linked the cause of death with their smoking history. The lethal effects of smoking were evident. One third of those who smoked died of their habit. And if, if they stopped, the risk decreased rapidly. How powerful. So we went in and asked Sir Richard, Amazing discoveries, what are you going to do to take tobacco off the shelves? He thought, he looked whimsically, he said, nothing. The idea of implementation had no, was no part of his vocabulary. He said, I'm, not an I'm an epidemiologist, I'm not a politician. So today, despite the knowledge that we have of smoking, 20% of Americans still smoke. America remains a major exporter of cigarettes and tobacco, and smoking is in, on the rise around the world in the ri rising economies of China, India, Latin America, and beyond. My generation provided the scientific e evidence. It remains for your generation to help solve this most vexing problem, implementation. And the public health tools that you will need will not be drugs or vaccines, but partnerships. Partnerships with lawyers to frame laws and tax policies. Partnerships with communicators to organize campaigns and organize the social media. Partnerships with experts in policy and health economics right here to frame these arguments. All new strategies in your armamentarian as a public health practitioner of tomorrow. But I want to tell you my own circuitous path to engage and address health issues by the millions. In 1979, I was in the epidemiology program at CDC, cutting my teeth on outbreak investigations. A cruise ship returning from the Caribbean that had gone out with 4,000 happy, healthy passengers returned with nearly 1,000 suffering from diarrhea due to salmonella. It was a messy, smelly, contentious investigation. People were sick and people were mad. 
And I trace the outbreak to problems of poor hygiene and sanitation on the ship. And the company canceled the next cruise to clean up. I was really proud. But was this to be my legacy in public health? Improving the lot of well-to-do American tourists on fancy cruise ships in the Caribbean? Well, with this limited experience as a diarrhea expert, <laughs> I was asked to go to Bangladesh to work on cholera control. Bangladesh? The country that Henry Kissinger had called the basket case of Asia? I said, why not? Let's go. So my wife, a pediatrician, Barbara, told her chairman she was going to Bangladesh. He looked at her and said, are you crazy? He says, you are throwing away a great career. Don't do it. But in fact, it was for both of us a turning point. And for many others, including John Clemens here at UCLA, the best training ground for public health that we could have ever imagined. We began our studies of cholera, one of the great epidemic diseases of our time, where patients get severe diarrhea, they lose a liter of fluid an hour, and can die within a day. But these deaths could be prevented with intravenous fluids. But how do you get intravenous fluids imported expensive to rural areas where people die? Some clever American and Bangladeshi investigators developed a simple solution, a simple recipe, water, salt, and sugar, oral rehydration solution that could be administered by mouth in, at home or in the clinics, even when a patient was purging. ORT could replace what was lost volume for volume, and the patient would survive. One patient received 98 liters of fluid over five days and walked out of the hospital alive. A true miracle cure. So ORT is now recommended for treatment of diarrhea around the world and was heralded by The Lancet as one of the most important discoveries of the 20th century, credited with saving a million lives a year. So parents, not to get personal, but did your graduates ever have diarrhea as children? <laughs> did you treat them with uh, replacement fluids and salts, ORT? Did you realize that this treatment came from American and Bangladeshi researchers working in Bangladesh? ORT represents one of the great achievements of global health. Think of it, research in Bangladesh that came home to help your child when he was sick a few years ago. Research anywhere can help people everywhere. The results of research in global health can be felt around the world, saving millions of lives at a time. Well, my wife went on to survey the causes of diarrhea in 100,000 patients seen at the hospital each year. And to our surprise, cholera was not the most common, but newly discovered pathogen, rotavirus, that infects every child around the world in the first few years of life was. Rotavirus kills about a half a million children a year in low-income countries, like Bangladesh. And in the US, it accounts for 5% of all hospital admissions for children under five. So since rotavirus infects children, rich or poor, black or white, Bangladeshis or Americans, we needed a vaccine to prevent deaths in Bangladesh, hospitalizations in the US. So I refocused my career. I adapted to become a virologist. Well, in 2006, 25 years after we left Bangladesh, we introduced rotavirus vaccines into the US for the immunization of all children. In 2008, this recommendation went to all children in the world, and the impact has been incredible. In the US, we've reduced diarrhea hospitalizations 95% for rotavirus and 5% of all hospitalizations in children under five. And in the developing world, we've begun to see a decrease in deaths. Now, as a public health physician, I have to reveal that I do have a conflict of interest. You see, my wife, Barbara, is now the chair of pediatrics at Emory, her success depends upon keeping the hospitals full of patients. <laughs> My success in public health, on the other hand, is emptying out those same hospitals through the use of this vaccine. You can see the conflict. <laughs> so graduates, when you have children and when your kids get immunized against rotavirus, you'll remember that you heard about it here from someone who, as part of a major team, helped to prevent this il illness at home and abroad, saving lives and improving health by the millions. 
Well, from this experience in Bangladesh, my wife learned to do research and care for children with in severe infections, and she's gone on to, despite her, her chief, has gone on to a successful career in pediatrics with a special interest in infections, would you believe? And our kids have been to visit Bangladesh and now have interest in global health. Imagine, we wonder where this might have come from, and they realize the satisfaction we've had in our careers. Well, as the director of the Fogarty International Center at NIH, one of my favorite programs, and one in which UCLA is deeply involved, sends young people, like all of you, to early in your careers overseas to pursue a year of mentored research. Sound familiar? For me, this experience was a game changer and launched me on a 30-year career studying something I never would have thought about studying before. And for you, this is now your chance to find an opportunity to dig in, to use your newfound skills to address one of mankind's continuing existing or emerging problems. The world is awaiting. We're in need of some new and creative solutions. For the past 25 years, UCLA has been the recipient of one of our first Fogarty grants to, to train foreign fellows in epidemiology and global health around HIV and to build long distance collaborations between UCLA and these foreign investigators. I asked Roger Deedles, your grantee and professor, what's happened to your trainees? Roger, where are you? There you are. I said, what's happened to your trainee? What can I say to this crowd? Does this early training make any difference? Does it work? Well, Roger smiled wryly, as you can see he does. <laughs> he then proudly spouted out the list of alumni of his Fogarty programs, the ministers of health of Taiwan and Hungary, the head of the National Institute of Hygiene and Epidemiology in Vietnam, the rector of the medical school in Cambodia, the director of the AIDS program in China, and on and on. I couldn't shut him up. He had so many names. <laughs> These are all people whose job, jobs affect the lives of millions every day and all trace their training, their accomplishments, to this graduation, this school, this faculty, and the scholarship skills and values that they acquired on this campus and at this university. What an incredible network of distinguished alumni you have here at UCLA, and what an amazing group of accomplished people you are joining as new alumni of this school. We count on you doing great things. So to you, the class of 2013, and your parents, there are several pieces of advice, advice I'd like to pass on. First, you should think big. You're well-trained, you're idealistic, you're energetic, you're adaptable, and you're open to new challenges. So you have the ability to make a difference, to improve the health of our society, to redress issues of health equity, to solve health problems of today and of our future, and to save lives by the millions. Second, you should find your niche and pursue this with passion. Be open to opportunities and experience, and often working outside of your comfort zone with international experiences or in the inner cities, real problems of health disparities are more starkly visible when, and you can find creative ways to address them. And remember that the solutions to some of the most vexing health problems of our day at home may come from research abroad. Third, remember, as I do, that disasters in your career can provide opportunities and directions that you never realized would be so helpful. Don't recoil and fall back, but embrace these. Welcome them as potential opportunities to rethink, adapt, and move ahead. Now, never in my wildest dreams and imaginations did I think I would work on enteric infections in my lifetime, but it's been incredibly rewarding. I've engaged with Bill Gates, who now sees rotavirus as, the, as his priority, his first priority for vaccines. I've engaged with the head of the World Health Organization, global leaders and politicians, and field staff, public health people working in the trenches of immunization programs around the world. 30 years ago, I was unsure of where I would be going when I sat in the audience of graduates like you are today. The international experience defined my career 30 years ago in extraordinary ways. This has become my own million person issue. So graduates, you are being launched on one of the most exciting trajectories, missions of your lives. 
Find your passion and pursue it. Immerse yourselves now. Use your skills and talents to the fullest. Don't be turned back by disasters. They may be opportunities in disguise. Network with your classmates, with your alumni, and continue your vision to improve health for all. Our future is in your hands. So now, think big and go out and save lives by the millions. Thank you very much. Okay.